Repentance is a commonly used and often misunderstood term. What does repentance actually mean? Is it an inward or outward transformation? Let's study the scriptures together and find the answer to these questions in God's Word. Welcome to today's lesson. My name is Wes and I'm one of the Bible study teachers here at the Camargo Church of Christ. This is the third lesson in our series, Steps to Salvation, Foundations of Faith. Be sure to check out the first two lessons in this series and consider subscribing to our channel and sharing our videos with others. Please leave a comment and let us know how we are doing and if there are any topics that you would like to see us cover in upcoming videos. Many people don't like the concept of judgment, especially as it relates to God. Instead of answering to God, many would rather use subjective measures to assess their morality. Proverbs 21.2 states that every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. So while the things we may do may seem justified by our sense of right and wrong, when we stand before God in judgment, as we are all appointed to do, we will be judged using God's word as a just and objective measuring stick. As we studied last week, true belief requires us to take what we learn from the scriptures and apply it in our lives. By understanding that transgressing God's law is sin, we can begin the process of turning away from that sin and turning towards God. Repentance is about taking the goodness of God's word and conforming our life to it. I've heard repentance defined as godly sorrow, which brings about a change in heart and a change in action. Repentance is changing our lives to bring us back into the safety of God's grace. When we seek God, we must make a conscious decision to do the things which please God and actively avoid sin. Titus 2, 11 and 12 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. This doesn't always mean that we're going to be perfect, so we should understand that we will stumble. The sinful things we did before may still tempt and threaten to pull us away from God. The Apostle Paul writes about the war between the flesh and the spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. But I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Repentance requires a true desire to stop sinning. We need to have the attitude like David's in Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and a right spirit within me. I watched a video featuring a man who had spent more than a decade of his life incarcerated after repeated convictions, and after serving several years of a sentence, he decided that he needed to change his life and seek God. And he knew that to stay out of trouble once he was paroled, as well as continue living as a Christian, he couldn't go back to the same people and places that tempted him before. He referred to this as changing his playground and playmates. Repentance requires abandoning things and relationships that are spiritually harmful to us. Thankfully, we are never alone in seeking repentance. God desires us to repent as 2 Peter 3.9 says that the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God wants us to find him, and he is with us every step of the way. Jesus is also with us on the path of repentance. Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, 16, that I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display his perfect patience 
as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Jesus Christ desires to walk with us as we move away from sin and as we move toward and seek God. Finally, we have our Christian brothers and sisters who are on the same journey to encourage us along the way. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 says that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. I can't think of anyone better suited to help us along the way than people who are literally walking the same paths that we are. Repentance is a process. It's a journey as we leave the temptation of sin and move toward God. Repenting of our sins is a necessary step of obeying the gospel and living a Christian life. I think so many people refuse to repent because they fail to see the better alternative to sin. Unless we appreciate how merciful and loving God is and how fleeting the things of the world are, we, we can't appreciate it. God doesn't care where you've been. He only cares about where you are going. Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 3, verse 8 of that epistle regarding his transformed mindset. He said, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I might gain Christ. Acts 17.30 reinforces that repentance is a required step and it's required right now, stating the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. If you realize that you've sinned and you desire to change your heart and change your ways, we can help you take the next steps. Feel free to call me at 859-585-7572. You can send email to Camargo, K-Y-C-O-C, at gmail.com. Leave a comment on this video or on our Facebook page. Our building's closed right now due to the pandemic, but we can still help you meet your spiritual needs. We invite you to like today's video, to subscribe to our channel, and follow our congregation on Facebook. If you found our message uplifting, please share it with your friends on social media to help get the word out. In our next video, we'll look at Confessing Christ. Matthew 10.32 says that therefore whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. We'll take a deeper look at confession next week. Thank you so much for studying with us this morning, and I hope that you have a blessed day.